dogs that kill. Life's something worth fighting for. Hello, everyone. I'm Jacqueline Coley, a correspondent for Fandango. And ahead of tickets on sale, I'm here to chat with the cast and filmmakers of Thor, Love and Thunder, Chris Tessa Taika. Thank you for being here. Come Thanks get those having. cookies. <laughs> yes, that's right. So it's been a few years <laughs> since it's been a few years since we saw these guys before. But I'm just curious if you can let us know where does this fall in the timeline of the events of Endgame, Taika? Like where are we picking up as? Oh. Where are this we is just find? after the Death Star blew up. <laughs> <laughs> right before Han Solo yeah. comes in, and, yeah. and uh, yeah. yeah, that's it. Where does you know more about Marvel movies than I do? <laughs> 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 well, you are the end, expert. End you love talking about this stuff. Endgame <laughs> left with Thor giving the kingship to Valkyrie yeah. on Earth, and Thor was in a pretty emotionally complex place at the time. What was his physique like? <laughs> he, well, he was a little out of shape. You know? Oh right, he was, okay. Represented his emotional kind of <laughs> complexity. And uh, he went off on a journey of self-discovery with the Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where we pick up. Yeah, we pick up. He's in a little bit of an existential crisis point, And he's yeah. trying to figure out who he is, what his purpose is. You know, is he really meant to be a superhero or is there something else? Basically, it's a midlife crisis. Yeah. But, you know, that point kind of that everyone, uh, everyone <laughs> and everyone's experienced this. You wake up and you're like, am I doing what I should be doing? Yeah. Mm. And that's where he's at. It's a biopic. But I mean, and I'm just, I'm just asking this for the internet. This is not my query because I felt that he was gorgeous and a lovable person on both. But has he hit the gym? Or are we going to get to see like some montage getting into shape? Yes, he is. He's at the he, gym. He, he's, he's been back to training, yeah. 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 Oh, so I'm digging adjusted that. Adjusted his um, regiment from Xbox to... To X blocks. <laughs> I like. Blocks, yeah. I like seeing that. And then also Valkyrie, obviously being the you know the head of the Asgardians now. This is a very different place from her than the drunken sort of wisecracking. I don't want to be anywhere. So where does she find herself on this new journey? Because she, uh, I wouldn't say that she's entirely reformed. Certainly not in wisecracking. But yeah, she's she's taken up the kingly duties and. Uh, it's new Asgard, though, so it's like Asgard on Earth, which is a, a different Asgard than we've seen yeah. before, and she's kind of trying to navigate Exploited. that. <laughs> Exploit it. She's exploiting her people. A few, <laughs> um, a few random sponsorships. <laughs> she's also, it's, 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 she's got all the um, responsibilities of, of basically running a town yeah. and looking after her people, but, and where we find uh, her is is also missing the battlefield, you know, because she spent her entire life as a career soldier and part of the, you know, the Valkyrie, and now she's kind of got an admin job where she's like just yeah. doing a lot of meetings. Mm. And, a lot uh, of bureaucracy, which is not really not her, her favorite. She likes battleocracy. She, 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 yeah. battleocracy. <laughs> <laughs> I really do like that. I love that we're going to get to explore this character now over four movies because this was the first sort of solo MCU movie that we kind of got to see under this kind of phase. But I'm just like, what does it feel like, Chris? You're the only one that gets four. You like, you know, like elbowing Tom Holland and be like, I got four. <laughs> like, just so you know. I didn't realize I had until a few weeks ago. <laughs> um, you have the most of any? Yeah, no one else has oh, done four. Um, hey. was, yeah, it's going to us. Eh? <laughs> No, it's cool. I, I, I have loved playing this character, and every time um, I've done it, I've had an opportunity to do something different, particularly when Taika turned up and we you know, threw it in I a different direction and wrecked it. <laughs> it turned up for, and sold us cookies. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know. um, no, and, 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 and look, every time there's a, a new creative venture and a different space to explore, um, it, it makes for a fun ride and a fun time, and that, that, that this film is just full of boundless opportunities to recreate again mm. or, or rebuild Thor because as you said from the last film he was in a different space um, so this film was yeah, a journey of self-discovery mm -hmm. for all of us yeah for me too yeah all of us <laughs> <laughs> I know, just looking at just you <laughs> all right all right Tiger we'll put you a little bit on the spot because I don't know if you guys know this but one of my very first interviews as RT was actually for Thor Ragnarok uh -huh. and oh, in wow. that interview Taika you let it kind of slip for us that Korg was the one that got to decide whether or not we came back for a fourth Thor. So I just want to know from you, because you said, said it in that. the interview, we have the clip, you're like, it really depends on how big of a trailer he wants to get, and you were like basically saying like Korg. So how did you get it greenlit? And when did you just, and when did Korg say you go ahead and do it? Um, well, Korg is an incredible um, 
person. And, you know, <laughs> incredible to work with. And yeah. I just, you know, as a director, I loved working with him because it was mm. like he's... There's such symbiosis between the two. Yeah, it's like and I, yeah. I feel more generous with him to give him more takes because I feel like he just brings something different. And, yeah. yeah. You um, give him more lines. More lines, yeah. 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 He's a little <laughs> difficult to work with. Yeah, um, he's a, some, sometimes a bit frustrating because he doesn't learn the script that I've written. Yeah. yeah. And, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, and he does it on the day. <laughs> yeah. And then he sometimes, you know, I could see him, he goes, and he reads it and he goes, why didn't I learn this? Yeah. I wrote this. It's a little um, rocky with him. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit rocky. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love that but, uh, no, the, I don't know, how, how, we basically got this green lip over dinner. And then when the, first, when the Ragnarok came out, yeah. we went and watched, a few, put, called into a few cinemas around town, and then we went and had a dinner, and um, we started talking through ideas for this new film, and, mm. and that's with Kevin and the rest of Marvel. And I think the film, like, the film became so beloved that, that they, very soon after that, they said, let's just do another one. Yeah. I love that one. And the dynamic of this one, it says right there in the tagline, love and thunder. And so you're coming back into this one, I feel like there's gonna be a lot of ships going on. There's people that shipped you in Korg, there's people that shipped you in Valkyrie. Obviously, there's the epic <laughs> love story of you and Jane. Like, Can how I is Thor's romance? What is shipping? I was, shipping, yeah, people, I that support, people that say like, you two is should be like together. Yeah. It's yeah. like, it's kind of like standing. But you as a couple. A couple, it's oh. a couple thing. Yeah. Shipping. Oh, shipping is like two people. Yeah, relationshipping. So they oh, ship you two as it. a couple. They Didn't ship make you its way down to Australia and New it, Zealand. Yeah, they put us, they put us <laughs> in a little box. <laughs> Don't they worry, seal it up, you'll get it in like 10 years. They ship us. Thank you, Tessa, for the old man translation. Sorry. What was your translation? <laughs> Don't worry, it'll it'll hit your part of the world in like seven years. Yeah, like everything else. You does. just got the espresso martini like last time. <laughs> Come off it. We just Come got New Zealand right. just got a third TV channel. <laughs> oh, we weird. just got TVs. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, where are your relationships uh, gonna be at this? Is Thor gonna be like in a triangle, quadrangle? <laughs> you know, the, the there is love in this film across the board. <laughs> Everyone has a little <laughs> awakening in, in, in one one way or another some shape or form yeah. and um, it, the universal love and love for oneself, well, one, love for friends, one for universe, yeah. love for community. And you know, this is, you, know the, you can assume some things from the title but also don't assume. Oh, yeah. that's deep. Yeah. That's true. It's deep. I like that. Yeah. All right, so we're going to add another female dynamic into this that one. That just means that we don't know what we're talking about. We can't tell you anything true. because it's it's how the fair. film ends is is that, different than what you mm -hmm. might think. But I would yeah. would say it's the loveiest Marvel movie in the history of Marvel yeah. movies. Is that can we say that or I think we can. I think we should think so. It's a romance. A romantic comedy. It's a romantic comedy. It's a romantic comedy. Romantic tragedy. It's a dramedy. When we first came up with the ideas for this, like. The one thing I had in my mind, the, the picture I had in my, in my mind was like a Mills and Boone cover of a, like a romantic book. And I was like, I want it to feel like that. Like, you know, at times some like melodrama and like over the, like, but wanting it to feel, and run headfirst into the romance, into the, uh, into the love aspect of it and not shy away from it. And like, you know, which I can tend to do in my films as, like, as a New Zealander who's cynical and um, hates everything. <laughs> I, you know, I was like, no, I'm going to commit to this and like, make sure that this does satisfy people and uh, uh, satisfy audiences um, with the romance. I do love that so much. I just want to ask I'm not even about just talking about the romance you all assume I'm talking about. <laughs> mm. I, oh, I do love that. Well, then, what do you feel like the Valkyrie Jane dynamic is going to be like? Because I feel like these two ladies could have infinite sort of energies with each other and I'm so excited to see what they bring. <laughs> um, you know, I, th I, I think first and foremost, Valkyrie is someone who's deeply steeped in her love of sisterhood, you know, that's sort of, and, and, and missing that and, and longing for that. And so having Jane in the universe, I think is, is, is lovely because she kind of has access to that thing again of, of having a sister. And then I think also it's, you know, it's delicious that she is another version of Thor. I think Val an, a, a big love that Valkyrie has is, is giving, taking the piss out of her dear friend. And so <laughs> yeah. there's like another opportunity to do that in a way with, with seeing his counterpart. And 
you know. But I mean, but Chris, for you, you guys went off and did Ragnarok away from Mad Natalie Portman's character. Mm. What was it like for her to come on this set and then just having the Jane come into this new, I would say, yeah. Taika, Taika energy of the Thor universe. Taika Vest. Taika Vest. Love it. <laughs> it was, uh, get those cookies. <laughs> <laughs> and now it was awesome because <laughs> the characters are both in very different places to when we saw them last. It was also very open-ended as far as what actually happened, did they break up, who left who, so on. So, and I think we all at one point had to go back and look at the second film and go, how did they split up? So we had the creative license to do whatever we wanted in that sense and then a lot of fun filling in the blanks and, and, um, and, and you know, having and a making up the blanks. And making, making up the blanks. Making more, <laughs> filling in the blanks and then and inadvertently <laughs> making more blanks. Yeah. And creating even more questions <laughs> and uncertainty. Yeah. Uh, oh, that, yeah, that happened. Well, I mean, Taika, did you, did you sit, I mean, like, Natalie, did you guys have, like, a dinner together? How did you pitch her to come back into this? Because she was, you know, she's on doing other things. And you I guys... went to her house and she gave me a glass of water. <laughs> <laughs> that was the whole thing. And a carrot. That's all. A cucumber stick. Uh, she, you know, I think that, like, what we did with Ragnarok was... Uh, it became appealing. It made these movies appealing to um, to other actors as well. Like you know, Christian really he saw that he was like, I want to do something fun, and you know, came, you know, wanted to be part of this this thing. And Natalie too. And you know, I think that um, she was just wanting to make sure that I don't know what how to say this, but like you know, the character in the in her character in those first two films is probably not the most exciting version of. Uh, you know, of a female character that we want from these films. And, you know, and, and I had to, to just talk to her about the fact that we all wanted to change that character just like we'd changed um, Thor's character for Ragnarok and to give her a bit more um, license to be adventurous and fun and funny because Natalie's a really funny person. And sometimes it's, you know, sometimes those sorts of things cannot be... Um, I know they're not the main focus when they come up with characters and, you know, mm. in, in films. Yeah, I will say this, you've done an excellent job. I think the Thor franchise has had a plethora of incredible villains or villainous instances where it's like, you know, Jeff or Loki, depending on the movie you asked for. And obviously what Kate did with Hela is just incredible. Mm. But Christian, like knowing all these villains that you've had, what, is, uh, what does Christian bring to the villain into, into the Thor universe? Uh, exactly what you'd want, hope and expect. Uh, nuance, complexity depth, um, a sort of quirkiness to it, which, which mm. I didn't see on the page. Mm -hmm. um, and in, with any sort of classic villain, the fact that you <laughs> you find yourself empathising or, or asking questions that they're asking or the ideas that they're posing, it's not just stock standard sort of evil yeah, villain. Yeah, you like root for them sometimes. Yeah, Him which sometimes is great if you're just... playing the hero. Yeah. Everyone's rooting for the villain. So. It's, I'd say he's the most uh, sympathetic villain yep. they've had. Um, and he's also tested the highest out of any villain that Marvel's had. Yeah. Wow. He's, yeah. What was it like working with him? Yeah. If you well, want. it's also this thing like that Stan Lee talked about, right, which is that your your trauma is the thing both that makes you a, a superhero and a villain, right? It's just in, in the case of a villain, it's it's unchecked that your mm. source of pain is, is what manifests into um, your villainry. And I think he captures that so well. And he just also was so surprising, you know? Yeah. Like he just would make choices that you'd be like, oh. Uh, it just was so fun to watch and such dexterity and also what he did with his body and he's really in it in and the way that you would assume Christian is, but he also has a sense of humor about it. I don't know. It's, it he's, was just, uh, yeah, he's a, he's, a, he's a great actor. And the only other thing he's done is um, this film called Empire of the Sun. And that was his last job. Yeah, <laughs> he was. That was a long was time ago too. Yeah, yeah. he hasn't so worked it's been in a while. An incredible journey for him. <laughs> yeah, it's and a, just it's to a kind of help, you know, just sort of kickstart, re-kickstart his career. Yeah, he's very choosy with um, his projects. It's yeah. taken him a long time. Yeah. to yeah. dive yeah. into something else. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm so glad he's a part of this because I can't wait to see what he does. Is this Christian Bale, as he said the actor's name? Right? Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. He's, okay. he's got a big. We're gonna get there. It's Chris something. Well, <laughs> Chris let's talk Stop about influences too, because there's a bunch of comic nerds that I know are coming into this knowing uh -oh. the whole well. Jane <laughs> Thor storyline. So I'm gonna ask you about which specific comics you wanted to pull from, but also since you said romantic comedies, I gotta know which 
romantic comedies would you say is uh, loosely inspired about the Thor? Because I so want to know this. Uh, it's a great one. How did Lose a Guy in 10 Days is great. It's a great one. 10 okay. Things I Hate About You is also a good film. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Clueless is my favorite, I'd say. I um, mean, you know, it's... it's yeah. Well, Are these influencing it as well? Oh, no, I don't think these are movies I like. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm not sure, what, top, no, top not sure what influences <laughs> I was looking at. Uh, I was thinking about like things that were like, Officer and a Gentleman. Like particularly the end scene, where he comes in and sweeps her off her feet. You remember that? Yeah. <laughs> it's a wonderful movie. Um, what else? I mean, just I, I, I'm. I guess the influences for me were like really big, over the top romances. Like, mm. okay, all I can think of is like anything with a Bob Seger song in it. Or something mm. like that. Oh, okay. I can oh. Di I can dig that. Um, the other thing I definitely want to say is that Thor is now known for just epic cameos. Like after you did Matt and <laughs> your brother, it's like I, I think like everyone's expecting it now. Can mm. we be in store for some more, I would say, epic cameos on this one? Yes. Yes. Nothing on that. Otherwise it won't be a cameo. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want it to be a cameo. Don't talk you about know. it. It'll be okay. a told you so. Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, then they're, then they're just going to be on the post and it's not a cameo. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to be, I get it, I get it, I get it. Um, the other thing too I definitely want to talk about is the fact that you guys do get to do a fourth one, but Taika, this is now your second endeavor. Do you think of this as part of a new trilogy? Like how do you think this film falls? Hmm. That's an interesting question. I haven't thought about it as part of a new trilogy. Because every time I make a film, I think I'm never doing that again. <laughs> and because uh, they're just too hard. Um, <laughs> as any film. Yeah. But I've done it eight times now. Yeah. Eight times I've said, I think I'm just going to pack it in. Yeah. I had a good run. <laughs> and then, sure enough, get lured back in by the Yankee dollar. And all the Get Oscars. lured back in by them cookies. And them Oscars. <laughs> and them Oscars. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> I will have to ask um, <laughs> both of you too because I've gotten to interview a lot of folks on Taika's project, both television and film, and they always talk about the vibe he creates on set. Mm -hmm. That there's just a different vibe. Talk to us, try and get folks prepared for what it was like for you guys filming on this one. I hear there's lots of music, lots, lots of drums. Of music. Yeah, lots of music, lots of lots of bit of dancing occasionally. A bit of dancing. Some dancing, um, yeah. Snacks, good snacks. Good snacks, some interesting direction. Um, <laughs> Some of it's like, do your don't Jack do that again, Chris. Yeah. Do your Jack Sparrow impression, and uh, which uh, Tesla <laughs> once thought. They played this game, and it was like doing impressions of the, and then his thing, but she had to guess. Yeah, Jack like, Sparrow, and he was like, and she goes, Tiger. <laughs> I was sure it was you. Jack Sparrow esque is Jack definitely Sparrow -esque. his style. I do. Yeah. It's fun. I've heard that as him. My my direction is in a New Zealand accent, and the fact that I don't know what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, Tessa was really great. I think maybe uh, just in the next one you can maybe uh, just just uh, again something. Okay, good. Most of it is uh, every scene you do is uh, is stifled by his stifled. laughing. <laughs> his stifled. Yes. Uh, yeah. Or his yelling something no, yeah, else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did ruin a lot of takes with laughing. Yeah. yeah. Just yelling How do you get over around the top that? of Because I some of our best stuff will never see the light of day because it has you laughing over the top of it. Um, well, they, they, yeah. I should just go direct from the trailer. You should direct from the trailer. <laughs> Keep Probably. your distance. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, become one of those <laughs> directors. <laughs> <laughs> Tiger will sit under the camera, like right here, and just like <clears throat> whisper or yell or scream suggestions. Yes. And um, it's fun. It, it creates a spontaneity and an insanity. That yeah. I think the classic thing is what you get on do screen. Do, do it exactly like this. Okay. No, 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 no. But yeah, however you want. <laughs> <laughs> And then, no, 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 exactly like this. Yeah, it's hilarious. <laughs> Just a bit not like that. What was your favorite under the camera Taika direction that he screamed out from you, either on this or from Ragnarok? Oh, oh, uh, oof. there's really too many to remember <laughs> and think of it's what constant. the favorite is. Yeah, it's it's pretty it's it's pretty constant. It never ends. Really? Yeah. Sorry. Right? What did the, did the Guardians, did they know that what they were getting into when they came on set? Like, did they have any idea that, that this was it? Like, what's the vibe now that you add in this, these sort of ragtag group of folks that I'm sure are just like, what is going on here? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I have a different name to James. James, I think, like, or well, he directed me briefly in uh, Suicide Squad. Yeah. And um, he just knows what he's doing. <laughs> That's the difference. <laughs> he's got a plan and he knows every frame that he's going to shoot and he storyboards everything and he just knows what he wants. 
where I'm just trying to like, I'm like, oh, I don't know what I want. I'll see it somewhere <laughs> in there at some point. Uh, the first time I met them all was on the Infinity War set. And from that day, there was just such a different sort of vibe and energy that each of the characters brought out in each other. And it was the same with on this film. Like, it, it's, it's a whole different dynamic when you have the characters from another franchise who are used to doing their own franchise mashed into this world. Um, it, 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 it was, like most of it, insane mm. and, and hilarious and fun. What yeah. was the favorite moment from the Guardians or Nebula or any of the new folks? Oh, well, I didn't. I, I just came to set to watch because I wasn't in any of the Guardian stuff, and I don't remember which of them said it to me. But someone asked me, "Is it always like this?" <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is." <laughs> I think like uh, what you were saying, Taika. I think it's like maybe just we're used to a certain like level of chaos, mm -hmm. like existing mm. in a certain level of chaos, because there's always like the version that's on the page and then the thing, and then we throw that out and do a bunch that's, that we know probably yeah. maybe 95% of it will never See the get to day. be in the film, but you do it for the 5% that can live and there. And just for the fun of like, we're here, we got yeah. dressed up in these stupid costumes <laughs> and we may as well like, yeah. enjoy this moment rather than like just be prescriptive and just do the one line that's written there. And the residual effect of the, that conversation or that energy or that gag that then trails into the actual dialogue it has a different sort of nuance to it. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I dig that. I want to just say real quick on uniforms, maybe we're not supposed to say, but love your Instagram picture. So what did I do? Of the new Valkyrie clothes. Oh, that, no, see that's, I don't, that's was, it was my fault. I sent a picture to my stepmom and she posted it on Instagram. <laughs> oh man. Oh really, I yeah, didn't know that, I didn't know that. Yeah, I wasn't me and it's a big thing. She feels terrible, I'm so sorry Marvel, I'm so sorry Disney. <laughs> it's not my fault, I will never, I'm never gonna send selfies again. No. But, no. but you looked not great. As, you, you, I you're looked nowhere great. near Mark Ruffalo's. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you're for okay. me, that's yeah. right. Wait a minute, can yeah. I just ask Real quick. Well, I was there. I was behind Mark Ruffalo at the premiere when he had his phone in his pocket. And, and it was online. Said, Live stream, you're, you coming to the premiere. And then he was like, great, sat down and he put it in his pocket with a camera pointing out at the screen. <laughs> and someone like ran in after 10 minutes and was like, pulled the phone out of his pocket because he had been streaming the movie. It was oh probably one of the greatest internet. dad internet moments ever. And, and I he's loved like, it so I much. told you not to make me do this live stream stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Mark. I appreciate it, though. <laughs> All right, last thing, though, on the new film, and I know you probably can't say, but if we're going to go and say Taikaverse, we have to talk about the multiverse, because I feel like Marvel just added this, like, wrench in all of you guys' tea now where there understand. can be different versions of mm. every event and you don't know which version of Loki between Endgame and some of the other stuff they've done. Oh, God. I know. I just have to ask. There's too many. Think there Thor's... was an editorial multiverse within this film. <laughs> I was thinking today, oh, like, yeah, so depending right. on which avenue you went down with which improvised scene, you have... There's, yeah, there's a potential Wait. for 15 different versions that of this movie. Set? Would that be so cool. We so should cool, do that one that, where you could like I would, choose I've your always own loved, adventure. I always love the idea of like just taking all of the footage and then making it available and just saying to someone else, Go "Here's it. Make a movie. Make your version of this movie." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a cool idea. I love this so much. Now that we're four films deep, obviously everyone wants to talk about the legacy of the Thor films and the legacy of the MCU. I want you to, um, if you could please, just talk about what you think is the legacy of the Taikaverse, like these two films together. What do you want folks to take from them? And I'll start with you, Tessa. I don't know. I always thought when we made Ragnarok, the whole concept of Ragnarok is it, it basically like destruction. And inside of destruction, there's the opportunity for creation, like Taika and I talk so much about introducing Valkyrie, like what does it look like if a female superhero disrupts some of those like classic tropes, like what does that look like? And I, to me that feels like a unique contribution, which is to say like the tropes are really cool, it's why we all tune in and we watch these movies obsessively, and also what can we do to subvert them? Um, that to me feels like the, the legacy of what our films do and hopefully continue to get to do. Love that. Mm -hmm. What about you, sir? Well, I think what uh, Taika does so, which so brilliantly in all of his films, and going right back to the first film I saw, which was Boy, is there's a, a, a wonderful amount of fun and adventure and humour, but heart in the, at the centre of it, and and, um, and 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 love, and and I do. This is what this film embodies, and I think all of his films have in in in. Uh, 
many, many layers. <laughs> this film definitely, again, well, we're not going to go on about love too much, <laughs> but, you know, I keep thinking about those moments in this film. There are moments in this film that uh, I think are very touching. I think, and, you know, whether well, your film is for people to have this, be swept away on this adventure and escape and laugh and have fun, but also to feel something. And I think, you know, this film is quite emotional as well, so... Yeah, um, I'm going to bring it to another emotional side a bit too because um, when I was gearing up for this, I let folks know and like the love they have for this particular franchise, for you as Thor, for you as Valkyrie, for your direction is pretty intense. Like people were like mad at me because I was going to be here, <laughs> and I just have to ask you, Taika, coming into this, I know the fans are so a big part of how you make your films. How has it been to see their reaction? It's quite amazing. I mean, when I first got um, Ragnarok. You know, there were a few people who were like, who's this guy? He's going to ruin everything. And I was like, that's the point. That's <laughs> <laughs> so the point I'm coming in to break it <laughs> and then make it in a new way. And there was a lot of love after that, which was great. But it was also, a, a, you know, it was a collaboration, a joint effort. Like Marvel wanted to do something different, um, which is why they brought me in. Chris wanted to do something different. I wanted to do something different. And, and it just, I guess we all just thought, what do we want out of this film? And let's try and um, satisfy that want and that need. Well, I think you have. Folks that don't know, like I said, tickets are on sale now for Thor, Love and Thunder. Please don't head over to Fandango and you can pick up your tickets now. Come get those cookies. <laughs> <laughs>